When it comes to backtesting in Python, one topic that I don't hear discussed very often is data quality. That is, whether the price data that you're getting is actually reflective of the underlying market movements for that asset on that day. This is especially prevalent with open, high, low, close data because often the data is aggregated from many, many different sources. So if you're pulling data from something like Polygon.io or Yfinance or any of these similar sites, oftentimes they'll be pulling in price data from a variety of different exchanges. And what can happen is you can get some extreme trading on a particular exchange, perhaps it has a smaller volume of trades taking place, so the market moves a lot more violently than it would on a different exchange, and that data gets lumped in with all the other exchanges. And this can manifest in the high and low values specifically in your data. They can often be more extreme than they would be otherwise. Ultimately, no matter how good your strategy or how amazing your backtesting system, if you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. And so one way to combat this is to gather the trade data directly from an exchange. So instead of getting the open, high, low, close, you get each individual trade that actually occurred during that time period. And you can use that to reconstruct open, high, low, close candlesticks for any time frame that you're after. I've done a video before on how you can stream live data directly into a timescale DB instance. So you can check that out if you're looking for real time data. But for historical data here, there's a really nice resource provided by Binance. So if you just Google Binance historical market data, you'll probably get this page here. And this serves as a central hub for all of the data that Binance give out for free. In particular, they give out historical trade data completely for free, which is quite unusual for most exchanges in my experience. Generally, they'll give you historical open, high, low, close data, but not trade data as it's quite a valuable commodity. If you give crypto tick data or crypto trade data a Google search, you'll find a ton of different websites selling trade data from a number of different exchanges because ultimately it is very valuable information for traders looking to backtest their strategy. So Binance here gives that to us all for free. And so we can go over to the trade section here. I'm going to go for spot data since that's what most people are trading. And it'll take you to data.binance.vision, which is the central repo for all of the data. By default, it'll take you to this menu here, so you can search for the pair that you're after. So I'm going to search for ETH USDT, mainly because that'll be a bit less volume than something like Bitcoin, so there'll be fewer trades and the data will be smaller to download. And so we've got a bunch of zip files here. You can scroll all the way back. I think this goes back to early 2021. So you can get every single trade that occurred on ETH USD for over a whole year, completely free, very easy to download. So I'll grab the most recent one here and we can get a look at this data and see what it actually looks like and how it could potentially be much more useful than directly downloading open, high, low, close data. So I'll save that down to disk here. You should just be able to open this with whatever you most commonly use to deal with zip files. You can see these files can be fairly meaty here. This one's at 67 megabytes, which is pretty large for essentially a plain text file. So I'll open that up and we can look at the different parameters here. None of the data that I found provided by Binance gives you a header to tell you what the different sources of information are. So you'll want to go to the documentation for Binance, which is on binance.docs.github.io. And if you go down to the market data endpoints here, you can find the schema for this table and you can check that it matches up with what we're getting here. So the first column is just going to be the trade ID. 
So it's just going to be a number that increments on basically every ID here. It's just a unique key given to each trade. So great. Then the second column here is the price. You can probably surmise that just from looking at it. It's going to be the same price as the asset. And ETH's about $1,300 right now. The third column here is the quantity traded. So this was one trade and looks like about 0.04 ETH was traded. Chad from the future here. The fourth column is just the quote quantity. So in this case, it's the quantity that's been traded in the quote asset. So that's going to be USDT for ETH USDT. If the pair was ETH BTC, it would be the quantity that was traded in BTC. Hope that's clear. I accidentally skipped over this column in the video. This value is just a timestamp. So this is just how computers measure time. I believe this is in milliseconds. So if you just grab this, you can put that in epochconverter.com and it should tell you what time that was. So you can see Friday the 30th of September, 2022 at midnight in UTC time, which is basically what all crypto exchanges run on. So that's just the time. Then this value here tells you whether the maker in the trade was buying or selling. So if it's true, the maker is buying. If it's false, the maker is selling here. Where the market maker is someone who's placed a limit order. So an order that didn't execute immediately. And the taker is whoever places a order that executes straight away. So if you place a market order, you're a market taker. If you place a limit order that's not immediately filled, then you're a maker. General rule of thumb to work on there. So in this case, the maker is the buyer. And from that, we can surmise that this is an immediate sell order. So the taker was selling at this price. The final value here is just whether the price was executed at the best price. In my experience, this is pretty much always true here. If you just scroll down the list. So probably don't need to worry about that too much. So, okay, we've got this CSV data. We know how it's structured thanks to the Binance documentation here. But how do we actually use it? How do we change that into something that we can run a backtest with? There are definitely frameworks that can directly ingest tick data, or you could build your own framework. But for the most part, we want to convert this back into open, high, low, close data as that's how most people roll their back tests. And so to do that, we can just open a new Jupyter notebook here, and we can open that CSV that we've just downloaded. So we'll need pandas here. So import pandas as CSV, pandas as PD rather. Got CSVs on the brain. We'll grab this here, just the name of the file. Run that in a new cell and we'll do df is equal to pd.read underscore csv and then the name of the file so run that run that if we print out df here things are a little bit unorganized this is not um, exactly what you would want here so you can see it's taken the first row of data to be the header here this is not great not only are we losing data here it's going into the header these values also don't really mean anything so we need to change our read csv here so we can pass in the names here. So the names is going to be the ID. This is as a list. So the ID, the price, the quantity, the quote quantity, the timestamp, did the maker buy, so maker buy, and then best price here. You can always refer to the schema on the Binance docs if you're unsure which is which. Here. Coming back here, try running this again. There we go. We've preserved our first column here, which is lovely. The next thing that you'll more than likely want to do with this data when you're processing it is, of course, to change the timestamp here to be a date time format so that you can easily do things like resampling. To do that is fairly easy. So you could do DF timestamp. Oh, we could change this to time here. So it's just called time. And then DF 
time is equal to pd.2 underscore date time and then just pass in that same column run this again this is now printing out a date it's not the date that we want here by default pd.2 underscore date time assumes that we give it the data in seconds whereas i believe this is actually given in milliseconds so if you do unit is equal to milliseconds that should work fine and give us a more reasonable looking date here unit not unity there we go that looks fine for the date here and then finally i would set that as the index so df.set underscore index time and then in place is equal to true so we change the actual data frame we don't return a copy of it this is a bit more tame of a data format and all we have left to do really is aggregate this to open high low close data the easiest way to do that is provided to us by pandas here so if you go to the pandas documentation it's pandas.dataframe.ag that's what we're going to be using here so back to our Jupyter Notebook here, and we want to select a particular column. So in our case, that's going to be the price column. That's the only one we're going to be aggregating, obviously, because open, high, low, close just uses the price. So we've got the price, and the next thing we want to do is resample it. So dot resample. So let's say I wanted to resample this to one minute bars to make that something we can handle. That's going to be one T for one minute. Again, this is just standard pandas date time offsets. You'll be well familiar with these if you've used pandas much at all. If you print that out, I believe you just get some slightly strange pandas object here. So this is this is not quite what we're after here. You have to call a dot ag on the final result here. And into dot ag, you provide a dictionary which maps the column name to the function that you want to apply to it or the name of the function you want to apply to it so we want a open column and the open well the open just takes the first price in that bucket so it's just going to be first then you want the high well that's just going to take the maximum value so max low well low is obviously going to take the min here and then close, which is going to take the last. So let's see what that looks like here. There we go. We've got our open, high, low, close data. You'll want to do some quick sanity checking that our high is greater than our low and that this resample has actually functioned. But it'd be super easy if I want to resample to 10 minute intervals or to one hour intervals. And if you had more data, you could obviously resample to daily, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's everything you need to know about where you can find some free tick data and how to manipulate it into a more familiar open, high, low, close format. Again, I have tutorials on how to stream real-time tick data from other exchanges using Timescale DB. Link will be in the description below. Subscribe if you like the videos and I'll see you in the next one.